I'll feed on my back. When you're tench fishing, traditionally everybody thinks it's just dawn and dusk when you're going to catch the fish. But there is a variation on the green tench, and that's called the golden tench. And these, I'm told, feed right through the daytime. Anything blue sky, they're supposed to be in a feeding mood. We're going to find out in a minute because we're down here in Devon and we're fishing a lake that is actually shape of a tench. Let's go and see what we can catch. Hey, you won't believe this guys. I've just walked onto the pagoda staging on the first part of the lake and there must be something ripping the bottom up here. Tench has got to be, you can see that mud, it's all stirred up. That's a sure sign that there's tench rooting and digging in the bottom. Golden Sense, male. Right, what I'm going to be using sweet corns, dead maggots. You see, they're not crawling away in the swim. The tench are going to eat all these, and yes, good old fashioned bread. Um, not going to use a lot though, not going to really pile it in heavy duty. I'm just going to mix it all up like that. Just if you had about a half pint box full, that will almost do you for a day. You want it on the little and often basis and try and, you know, six or eight grains of sweet corn, six or eight grains of sweet corn, and let them come to you, you know. Once they start feeding, you'll be okay. And then I roll up little pellets of bread like this, smaller than your thumbnail, and I don't squeeze them too hard. Just pinch them out of the white bread. Uh, there's two baits there, just roll it gently, don't squeeze it too hard, you want it to puff and expand in the water. So, having seen the reputation here from a couple of other people already catching fish, I want to get at it and get some bait in the water. Because the fish are so close in here, I'm going to use a float, they're virtually under the rod top, I've had a look, I've seen them moving, I know we're going to have a good shot of them. Bottom end only, what we call bottom end only on the float like that, and you shot it so it just comes down to the water surface there. I call it pipping, so you can just see the pip. With my eyes, you need to see some float, but about there, just so you can see that. Plumb the depth so you get the right depth, and then one shot, and about eight inches, and a piece of bread flake. But let me just show you how to put the bread flake on properly. Okay, for bread flake fishing, you can either use a slice bread like this, or uncut. Take a piece of bread flake, but don't do this, right? Don't do that. Don't pinch it on too hard, because that just solidifies underwater. Look how hard it is to pull the hook through. Pinch a piece of flake just around it, but look, I'm just leaving the point showing this is the tiny piece I pinch. If you don't pinch it hard enough, it's going to float. You just want to compress it a little bit so it sinks down through the water slowly. And that's, and that's basically it. It doesn't matter if you see that point showing. traditional tench do. Come on, come out there. Digging and digging and digging like a little tuna. Come out. He's coming, he's going, he's coming, he's going. Oh, good fish, they're really scrappy. He's out, he's out, he's out. Yes. 
Yes. Well, that's not bad for a first fish, that one. A golden tench, just as they said we're in here. Middle of the day, when real tench fishermen will probably be going home or asleep. I mean, unbelievable colours on it. And they seem to be really, really good condition in here. Black eye. I think they're a bit sort of like the koi carp, I don't know, with different markings along this top end at the back there. And I saw a couple cruising when I first saw them in close with really black markings like a koi carp. But that, that is just unbelievable colour on that. Trouble is, I've seen some bigger ones out there. That shows you they take bread flake. Away you go, my son. What was the take like? Straight down. First cast this. Just Good dropped time. in. Double sweet corn. Right at my feet. I'm going to have to try and control this. A yeah, bit give a bit more drag in. They generally go for the, uh, the margins and the rushes. First golden tench fill. First one. That is definitely gold. Size 10 hook, two grains of sweet corn, about eight inches and a shot just to sink it to the bottom and let it rest on the weed just like that. Ledgering this is, and there's my bobbin. I'm gonna use that for bite indication which I'll show you in a moment. Audible bite alarm, visual indicator, little bobbin out of the spine of a book. Pop it over, pull it back down, take the tension out of the line. When the fish takes, it does this, but most important at the other end, you must, must leave the reel on anti-reverse. Otherwise you're going to lose the rod and reel. Put it on anti-reverse. If it's fixed like this, it's going to get ripped off. Take the anti-reverse off. When the tench comes, you get what we call a churner. And it can hook itself like this. Pick it up. Bam, strike. Well, there's the proof of the pudding on this one. Look, there's two grains of corn and he's still got that single grain of sweet corn left in his mouth. In fact, if you look down his throat, you can see other bits mushed up. So they're definitely liking the sweet corn, but it's a sort of 50-50 on the bread. But no question, out of the two, although this one was on that uh, sort of bolt rig, ledger rig with the back wine, the float is the one that's producing the fish. We've had over 20 tents mostly on the float, plus that superb bonus koi. What a golden day.